Hey everybody, it's Mike from 1614 Fitness and we are about to rip into what I think is one of the more important podcasts that you're ever gonna get from us. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Mike from 1614 Fitness, and yeah, I hope to bring you a pretty darn important podcast. So here's how we do these things. Chuck is a partner in crime when it comes to these videos and podcasts and books and all that sort of thing. And we always try to do between a 25 or 20, 30, in that ballpark, length for these. And we do that because for whatever reason, 20 minutes seems to be the magic duration for doing cardio. So our hope is that we can create podcasts that people can enjoy while they're doing cardio. That's Chuck's idea. I hate giving him love, but that was his idea, and I think it was good. So just before we go on set today, I go, hey, Chuck, just as a heads up, probably not going to go 20 minutes today. Might not do 25. And he goes, no, no, I I need you to do 20 to 25. I go, okay, but I'm probably not going to get 20 to 25. It was like Abbott and Costello, who's on first, that whole thing. And for you young folks who have no idea who they are, they were way back from the vaudeville days. Still, you know nothing. But anyway, we look like buffoons off camera 10 minutes ago going, it's got to be 20. It's not going to be 20. It's got to be 20. In fact, he's looking at me right now doing this. I'm going to try, Chuck. I'm going to try real hard. But here's why I'm in this conundrum. Because the topic I think is so important to share with you today it's not a real long topic. In fact, it's pretty simple. So Chuck was going, well, put it in with something else. And we were going back and forth. But I said, Chuck, I think this, albeit simple, is significant enough where it's got to kind of have its own podcast. So he rolled his eyes and says, great. As long as you can make it 20 minutes, we're good. Right back where we started. So I walked on camera and said, oh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Anyway, what is this big topic? It's called consistency. Consistency. So let's think about that for a second. If I've got a client of mine who eats really, really well Monday through Saturday and has a cheat meal or even a cheat day on Sunday, well, consistently they're eating well. That's great. I call that treating my body like a temple Monday through Saturday and treating it like a carnival on Sunday. But consistently, we're eating well. So the rule is, is that I eat cleanly, or that person eats cleanly. As a exception, I treat my body like a carnival. So my body will adapt to what I'm doing consistently. It's what what I'm doing more often. Same thing goes for training. If I have a person who's consistently moving about, and very rarely sits on a duff watches TV, well, their body is gonna make adaptations for that. The consistency is, is that they're working and they're moving. The exception is that they're not. So that's what I want to share with you today, the art of being consistent. I want to share you a few stories because that's what I do. I'm a storyteller. But consistency is huge. I have people all the time say, well, listen, Mike, I can only work work out one day a week. What's the point? Well, that's 52 workouts. And if I pose it to them that way, a lot of times they go, hey, yeah, you're right. And here's another thing we wrestle with. And we wrestle with this a lot. I see people who get all geared up. They get all amped up about doing something at 100 miles an hour. So they go into it full bore. And that crazy energy only lasts for a couple days. And they're like, I'm done with this. And they go back to sitting on their couch. They completely killed consistency. It just just goes away. It's no good. So we've got to find a way to maintain a certain level of consistency. I think in the fitness world, it's going to help you a ton. Let me share you a story, and this story may get me in trouble. But anyway, this gentleman, we'll call him my son. That's his nickname. We call him that because he's young and I'm old. It's just that simple. He comes to me and he says, Mike, I really want to do X, Y, or Z. Okay? But for me to do X, Y, or Z, I need to be in better shape. I need to be able to run this distance, and I need to be able to do this many push-ups. I need to do this many pull-ups. I bet you can read between the lines what my son wants to do. So we built a plan. I guess it was like two and a half, three years ago. And it was a nice, slow, and steady schedule that allowed for consistency. See, because I knew this plan that he had was about three years away. So if we go about it in a very methodical, consistent manner, man, we're going to be in great shape. We can cruise into this without any challenges whatsoever. But lo and behold, my son was like, I got to go faster. I got to go harder. I'm like, easy there, Red Rider. Easy. Settle down, man. 
He said, no, no, I got to get there. I got to get there. And you know that big football game with the super and the bowl thing that I'm not allowed to say because I'll get sued or Chuck will get sued? Sorry, Chuck. We'll get off that. But anyway, one of the big commercials for the big game, they brought back the old tale of the tortoise and the hare. I think it was a BMW commercial. But long story short, once again, the tortoise wins. Why? Because he's consistently moving forward. The hare goes bananas and sits. Bananas and sits. It's been my experience training on triathletes as I've done for a long, long time. One of the battle cries of uh, doing a triathlon is never stop. Keep moving forward. And that's exactly what we've got to do here sometimes. You just got to move forward. So let's go back to my son. Just like I said, he went crazy, crazy fast like the hare. And then we went on a two to three to four month hiatus. And he calls me back up. He says, Mike, can I meet with you? Sure. I set him up a game plan. And he goes crazy, 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 and then fell off the wagon a little bit. I'm sorry, son. Just telling the facts. So now we've got another phone call. And the phone call is simple. Hey, Mike, it's your son. I got to get back. I got to. Sure enough, we meet. What's the first thing I said to him? I said, honey, if we would have ran with the ball consistently two and a half years ago, we'd be so far ahead of things. So I said, maybe we just got to slow down. Instead of working out six days a week, let's do four, let's do three. Let's figure out something that we can do and remain consistent. That's the game. We just have to be consistent. So now he promises. He says, Mike, listen, I completely 100% promise. So what'd we do? We toned him down. We toned him down because, man, at the pace he was doing, he was looking like that crazy left shark, working out, working out, working out, rolling all over the place, spinning, spinning. It was a mess. I said, dude, settle down. You're a left shark. I don't want you upset the right shark. And we got a whole bunch of sharks freaking out. Son, settle down. I said, dude, that's the way to go. We just have to be consistent, especially when you've got a three-year deal like that. It really goes back to what I've been preaching for so long. It's got to be a lifestyle change. You know, a diet is when you change your eating and you eat pork and cabbage or cabbage and water or whatever crazy diet you got and you do it for four or five days and you're like, dude, no more. I can't do it anymore. And you change and you go back to whatever it is you're doing. It's the same thing. You've got to come up with a game plan eating that you can do consistently. So my son, he was kind of doing a, a diet, you know what I mean, in terms of uh, comparing the two. He was going crazy and then falling off the wagon. So now I pray he's going back to consistency. The same thing I told him two and a half, three years ago is what I told him just a few weeks ago. Slow down. Let's establish a game plan that we can do consistently all week and then do it again the next week and do it again the next week. It's been my experience that so many times people get excited. They go through all the preparation. They come to the gym and they work out and the first time they get a roadblock or hiccup and a week goes by and they can't get in, they feel like it's just, it's done. It's a waste of my time. I've already failed. I'm not going back. I understand why you think that way, but look at it in an entire year. So what, you missed a week? So what, you missed two weeks? With this hand, I missed like three months. It happens. But when you take a step back and take a look at how many workouts you had for an entire year, slow and steady really will win you the race. That was a whole lot of W's and R's. I almost screwed it up, but it really will. Stay slow, stay steady, and stay consistent. Here's a great story of consistency. She doesn't know I'm going to say this, so she's going to be embarrassed and a little upset, but I'm going to do it anyway. Her name is Sam. She's just an absolute dream. At 1614, she is just a perfect client. She walked into the gym and she says, my son works out here, but I'm a little bit afraid. I go, why are you afraid? She says, I don't know, but gyms are scary and I don't like them. And I go, this is right in my wheelhouse, dear, because we are the most unscary gym on the planet. So I walked around, we got comfy, and she goes, okay, I think I'm going to be able to do this, because we really are. I like to think the kindest, softest, most gentle gym on the planet. So she says, I can do this. So she says, I'm going to hire you as a trainer. So we get together once a week. And again, she's not what we're going to call a gym girl. She says, what's our game plan? I says, my game plan with you is A, to get you comfortable. B, get you on a workout program that you can do consistently. That you can do every day, every week rather. See, because she had the same game plan as my son, and she goes, I'm going to get in here, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, I'm going to do it in like three or four days. Whoa, slow down. Tortoise in the hair, big football game, advertisement, commercial. Slow and steady is going to win the race. That being said, so we've been doing this, she and I, for months now. 
She comes to the gym with me once a week. She does things on her own twice a week and she sends me love notes on text and tells me how far she walked, how many strides she did. So she's consistent, consistent, consistent. I just checked her body fat two weeks ago. Guess what? She dropped body fat, gained muscle mass, and that is a recipe for success. So she just keeps on doing it. I'll see her in two days and we'll just keep working on that consistency. Another story of consistency. I don't know if I'm allowed to use this guy's name, so I won't. We'll call him Pete. It's not Pete, but it's one of the firefighters I work with. At Aetna, I go there twice a week, and we have workout uh, programs with those guys. We have a class where we teach these guys how to, uh, to be more proficient when it comes to agility, how to move forward, and certainly how to be in better shape. Ralph was doing the exact same thing as my son. He says, Mike, I'm doing sit-ups and abs every day of the week. I'm in here, I'm doing, he's just working gangbusters. But he wasn't consistent. He'd be hot, cold, hot, cold. Last week, I'm in the uh, studio, or not in the studio, I was in the firehouse with him, and we do a dynamic warm-up, and then we do some agility things because I think it's important that firefighters be agile because, let's face it, if they stumble and fall, that could cause a lot of damage, not only to us, to them, but more importantly, potentially their lives. So we need to keep them agile and work on their balance the best we can. So we're going through it, and I'm being myself, being silly and loud and talking, and all of a sudden, I hear Pete yell out, Hey, Mike, guess what? I go, I go, Pete, what? And he screams out, eight pounds and a whole body or a whole uh, pant size different. And I stop. I just stop everybody. I go, what? He goes, yep, two months doing this consistency stuff you're telling me to do. Works. I couldn't have been happier. I stopped it. I went over, gave him a high five, and I said, tell me again what happened. He says, I've lost eight pounds and I've lost an entire belt size on my pants. Well, the problem was is that his intentions were good. His energy was great. But it was hot, cold, hot, cold. It wasn't consistent. We have to be consistent. Consistency is going to allow our body to make the adaptations necessary to make change. Remember, our body will change when it needs to. If we change the workload for our body, it will change to meet that workload. If we're up and down, up and down, up and down, our body's not really sure what requirements we're asking of it. Therefore, it's not going to make a lot of changes. However, if we make consistent requirements upon our body, chances are real good it's going to make change. It was with Ralph, it was with Pete, it was with Sam, and it's going to be with my son because it's got to absolutely positively happen. So remember, when you're looking to make diet change, when you're looking to make a fitness slash training change, look for a plan, look for a scheme, look for something that you can do consistently. Consistency is going to win you the race. And the same school of thought's got to be employed when you're sitting at home and it's raining as it, or snowing as it may do here in the next couple hours. Do I really want to get up and go? Well, for me to remain consistent, I need to get up out of my house and go to the gym or go for a walk or go do something. Consistency, consistency, consistency. It's what we need if we're going to make changes. Remember, the only time our body's going to change is when we change the workload. The only way it's going to happen is if we make that happen consistently for a long period of time. All right? Perfect. So when you're setting up a diet, when you're setting up a workout, make sure you can do it consistently. My son's gone too. Not really my son, but it's just fun to say. All right, everybody, remember, next to goals, which I think might be the very most important podcast we've ever done, I think this one is. Remember, consistency is ultimately going to win you the race, and it's going to make or allow you to change your body the way you want to. There you have it. Set some goals, be consistent with it, and I guess I'll see you guys at the gym.